Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be setting up Active Directory for our lab. If you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. Let's jump onto the desktop and have some fun. Okay, folks. So you see we rebooted it. We're resuming from the last video. So let's go ahead and just log into here. So I want to go ahead and log in with my fancy password. And I want to make this larger. And once this is here, we're going to go ahead and I want to go ahead and zoom this stuff in so we can see a little better. And we can do like 175 maybe. Yeah, I think that should be good. Okay. So once we log into our server, what we have to do first, we have to make some changes. At least I'm going to make some changes. So for the computer name, I want to go ahead and change this. And I want to put, whoa. All right. It did that because of the whole VMware tools. Let me see if we can correct all that. Let me go ahead and hit display settings again. I apologize for that. Maybe I should have been a little more patient. Okay, so let's come back here. Let's click on computer name. Let's change this. I want to put DC01-VM, which is which it stands for domain controller, right? And we can go ahead and hit OK here. And patience. I'll probably have to reboot my laptop after this video before we go on to the next tasks. All right, we're going to do restart later. So what I'm going to do really quick, I want to open up a command shell and do an IP config. And my IP address is 138. So I want to leave it as that. What I want to do is statically assign my IP address to 192.168.100.138. So how we can do that? My big head is in the way, but you just right click. You know what? Let's do it here. So we can click on Ethernet zero. It's assigned DHCP now. So we can go ahead and right click on this, go to properties, and we can go to IPv4, double click on this, and then use the following IP address. So I want to go ahead and put 192.168.100.138. Okay. And hit tab. If yours doesn't come in with this subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, please put that same IP, excuse me, same subnet mask there. And the gateway, I think mine is going to be .100.2, and I'm gonna go ahead and verify that. Yes, it is, okay. DNS server, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just put Google, whoops. And Google is 8.8.8.8, .8 okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and validate Settings, okay, okay, and this should be good. Okay, we're gonna cancel that, close out. So now we can just refresh this and we should see the new IP address here shortly. Here we go. And I have IPv6 enabled if I wanna do IPv6 attacks later on. So I'm gonna leave it enabled. Normally I turn it off because it's annoying, but I'll leave it there now. So as far as before we actually disable the firewall, it's 138. So let's come on to our Kali Linux machine and let's log back in with Kali Kali. And I want to go ahead and put 138. That's the IP address to our domain controller or our future domain controller. It is not pinging. The reason being is because it has a Windows firewall enabled. So we're going to go ahead and click on private on. We're going to click on that. And we're going to turn this bad boy off. So domain network, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. In the real world, you don't want to do this. But in the lab, we're going to make our life simple. Yes, we can create a group policy to do this as well. Maybe I'll do that later on. But I just want to make this work right now. So let's go ahead and come back to Kali. And hit the up arrow. And bada bing, bada boom, here we go. Now we're able to ping it. Cool. So now we know we can talk to that. Right. So let's come back here. And the next thing we're going to do, I want to leave everything else on for now. And let's go ahead and turn this off. This is a pain in the butt. So I want to go my IE enhanced security configuration. I want to go ahead and turn this off and off. And this is when you open up IE, it gives you that, you know, continue, continue, add an exception or whatever. I don't want that crap on. All right. So everything else should be good. Okay. So I want to go ahead and reboot now. So those changes can take effect and then we can go ahead and continue adding active directory domain services so let's give this a moment and we'll resume in a sec 
Okay, so we did reboot the server. And let's give this a second to actually boot up. And we can come back to local server and make sure our computer name is changed. As you can see here, it is changed to DC01. Our firewall is still off and our IP is still there. So the next thing now we have to do is install a domain controller and create Active Directory and make the change for the display settings. All right, let's do whatever, 200, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Okay, I think that's that's good because I have a wide screen, so it should be good. So if we come up here, we can go to click on Manage, Add Roles and Features, go to Next, Role Based, that's fine, Next, DC01, Next. Right here, the role, the server role, we have to install Active Directory Domain Services. Add the feature, click Next, 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 Install. We'll give this a moment to install. It shouldn't take that long, and we'll continue the process. Okay, so this configuration has been complete. It took about two minutes for me. And what it needs to do now is we have to promote this server to a domain controller. So you can see right here, promote the server to a domain controller. Let's click on that. And we're gonna go ahead and click on a, add a new forest because we don't have nothing right now. This is the first domain in our forest. So I wanna put YouTube.local, okay? That should be fine for me. And the reason why I put dot local because it's in a lab environment, right? So I'm not gonna get into what all this stuff is. If you wanna learn more about Windows Server, I have a whole playlist on 2022 and 2019, but we're gonna specify DNS servers, D DNS services on the server, a global catalog so it writes to Active Directory. It's not a RODC, which is read only domain controller. And the functionality level is gonna be up to 2016 because that's the latest and greatest. And our password is gonna be the same password as your domain admin, that's what I do. So I'm gonna put in my fancy password. Okay, so once we're done there, we can click on next and next. And the net, the in my case, then the net BIOS name should be YouTube without the dot local. And if it's long, it's only gonna show, I think the first eight characters. So let's go ahead next here. And the paths are gonna show you the sysfall directory, everything, the NTDS, dot, or the NTDS directory. So your database file, your database folder is the NTDS.dit, your log files are in the same directory and your sysfall directory resides in sysfall. Okay, if you wanna change that, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so these are all the options. If you wanna look at the script that what it's doing in PowerShell, you can copy this and you can do it in PowerShell. But we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And it's gonna see and make sure the prerequisites are checked. And if everything looks good, it will allow us to install it. If it's not, it will say want, 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 go check whatever you need to get checked. And we are all good, successful. Cool, so let's hit install. Let's give this a few moments. This takes a few moments as well. So we'll resume shortly. All right, so once it is complete, you will have to reboot. As you, can, as you can see on my screen here, it says it's gonna log out, reboot. This takes a minute or so. Once your machine has rebooted, you're gonna see if you use the same domain as me, uh, youtube.local, you should see YouTube slash administrator for your login. That's gonna log into the domain admin account, which we created initially when we set up our server. Okay, so let's give this a few moments to boot up. And like I said, hopefully you guys are enjoying these. And I wanna say, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share these videos. I really wanna hit 100K this year. And if I can do that, I have a big surprise for a lot of folks. So hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we hit that 100K mark. I wanna have that wall with a silver button. So let's help me get there, thank you. So this is gonna take probably 45 seconds to a minute, it all depending on your processor speed, it all depends on your computer and how much memory you are allocated to your server. So let's give this a moment and we'll, uh, we'll catch back in a sec. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and do a little control alt delete. So as you can see here, YouTube slash administrator and let's log in 
with our domain admin password because this is the only user that we have set up at the moment. So now with our Active Directory set up, let me go ahead and go to local server. And you can see workgroup is now a domain, which is youtube.local. And this is everything. So if we go to tools, active directory, users, and computers here, this damn thing went small again. This is a pain in the butt. If this guy, if this happens to you folks, just, I guess you just have to manually make it bigger. Okay, so this is active directory, right? So the reason why you wanna set up an Active Directory domain for your lab is because if you're learning penetration testing or ethical hacking, red teaming, whatever you wanna use this lab for, 98, 95 to 98% of the organizations, you know, even small, medium, large organizations use Active Directory. So you need to understand this identity management in order to be successful as an internal pen tester, right? So. You can go in and tinker around. You can watch my videos on how to set up these servers, how to set up group policies. I get deeper into server administration. This is not a server administration course or video. This is strictly to set up Active Directory and Windows Server 2022 in order to set up for our red team slash pen testing lab. Okay, enough said. So if we click on YouTube.local, we can see we have a built-in container computers container, as you can see here. So we have this organizational unit. I'm just gonna put that out there. So in domain controllers, we only have one DC. So when I come here, we have the type container, containers, container, organization unit. So what are the differences between these two? I wanna explain this high level, right? So a container contains the computers that are joined to the domain or whatnot, right? So an organizational unit, just to simplify it, we can apply group policies to a organizational unit, not a container. Just remember that because I remember I used to give that interview question, right? I'm like, oh, I have a container that's called users or called new users or whatever. And every time I try to do a group policy, go into group policy management, I try to find this container and I can't find it. Why not? And people be like, I don't know. Because you cannot apply a group policy to a container, you can only do that to an organizational unit. Just remember that if you're a sysadmin or you're an IT support trying to be a sysadmin or if you are getting an IT position that you get that question. So that's pretty much that. Let's come back to server manager. And the next thing we can see is DNS right, because we installed that. So inside of DNS, we have a few things here. We have forward lookup zones. If we look into here, we have youtube.local, right? So we only have one record. I'm not gonna go into records, any types or, you know, anything like that, but we only have one A record, which is a, which is pointing to 192.168.100.138. So it's, obviously you should know what DNS is if you're taking this little video course but if you want i want to i want to do this now so i want to add a new zone for reverse lookups reverse lookups are if you want to set up a pointer record like again i get into more details in my server course and primary zone here i'm gonna go ahead and hit next all my dns servers running on this domain controller you info uh, i'm so used to infosec pat.local youtube.local reverse for TCP IP, I mean IPv4, and then mine is 192.168.100, right? So I'm gonna go hit next, that's fine for me. Only, allow only secure dynamic updates. This is what I wanna do. You can do do not, but I like to do this one, this is mine. This is what I do. Obviously you can do you, do you boo boo. All right, so now, if we open up a command shell or you know what, better yet, let's come over to our Kali box, right? So let me go ahead and log in. And let me ping, make sure that's going, okay? So that's the DC. So now what I wanna do is ping DC01, I think it's dash VM dot YouTube 
dot local. Uh, do, 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 do. Is that my thing? Let's go ahead and come here. DC, okay, so this is a good one. And I want to do this for this lab. I think that's what I have, right? Let me come back here. DC1-VM. Okay, so why is this not working? Right? The reason being is because we need to set up a, in your LM host file, in your host file inside of Kali, we need to point this domain name to an IP address. So how can we do that? So if we cat, oh, not that, host, right? So we're only catting it. We're going to make changes in a second. So these are the only IPs to host. So 127.0.1.1 to Kali, blah, blah, blah. So if we go hit and nano, and we make a change. So what I want to do is, whoops, and I want to put 192.168.100.138, and I want to put dc01-vm.youtube.local. So now it knows how to find this domain name. Right, so I want to do Control X, Y, Enter, and then I want to cat it out just to make sure it's there, and here it is. Fingers crossed, if I know what I'm doing, if I ping that now, it should ping. Bada bing, bada boom. Now it knows where to find that. So that's just something you should do for any kind of environment. Say, for example, this might be a trick on an exam. You might not be able to reach something, but you can ping the IP address, but you can't get to the domain name, whatever. Make sure you make this change. And I think that should conclude this video. Let's come back here. And we, yeah, that pretty much concludes the video. So thank you so much for watching me set up Active Directory, doing some little tips and tricks, and I'll see you in the next one.